In these problems, we're doing some real algebra. We're solving for a variable in some pretty complex situations. When you're solving for a variable, you want to try to get the letter, the unknown, all by itself on one side of the equation. So step by step, you have to get rid of the other numbers that are on this side of the equal sign and put them all on this side of the equal sign. Almost always, getting rid of something that's multiplied by the variable is the last step. So we'll look at this step, this number first, how to get rid of that. This is a plus 1.7. So what's being done to this side of the equation is that 1.7 is being added to it. To undo that, we would do the opposite of adding, and we would subtract 1.7. But the rules of algebra say we have to do the same thing to both sides of the equal sign, so we would subtract 1.7 over here. Now on this side, when we take a positive 1.7 and we subtract 1.7, that comes out to be 0, which we don't even write. So it's like they cancel out. On the other side of the equation, we take 2.3 minus 1.7, and we should get 0.6 left. You can check that out on your calculator. And then the 0.4b comes on down, 0.4b, and our equal sign. So now we've got it down to this. We've got 0.4b on one side and equals 0.6 on the other side. The last thing to do here to get b by itself is to get rid of this 0.4, which is being multiplied to it. So we undo that multiplication by doing the opposite of multiplication, which is dividing by 0.4. We've got to do it to both sides. I divide by 0.4. On this side, these 0.4s, top and bottom, are going to cancel out, leaving b all by itself exactly what you want. On the other side, you can pull out your calculator and figure out that 0.6 divided by 0.4 is 1.5. So B equals 1.5. This next one has fractions in it. We're going to do the same thing, but it's got fractions, so it might be a little bit trickier. I think I'm going to deal with the fraction in a minute. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this 23. I mentioned in the last problem that usually the last thing you do is get rid of whatever is multiplied by x. So I'm going to work on this part first. This is a minus 23. So what's being done to this side of the equation is that 23 is being subtracted from it. We want to do the opposite of that to undo it. So we're going to add 23. But the rules say we have to add it to both sides. Can't do it to just one. Over here, a negative 23 and a positive 23 become zero, and it's like they cancel out. Over here, what do we get? 60. 37 plus 23 is 60. So now I've got, well, let me write it down here, 1 and 2 thirds x equals 60. Now to deal with this fraction better, I should take it out of a mixed number and put it into uh, uh, an improper fraction. And remember how to do that, you take whatever number is here and multiply it by the bottom. So 1 times 3 is 3, and then we add that to the top. And that's 3 plus 2 is 5. So this is actually 5 thirds x equals 60. Now, at this step, whatever is multiplied by x, you want to divide both sides by that. But with this fractions divided by fraction, it can get pretty compl complicated quickly. So another way to do this is to multiply by the reciprocal. Okay? So f instead of 5 thirds, we take 3 fifths and multiply that by this side. Uh, but of course, we have to do it by both sides, so let me put it over here, too. The reason this works, you can see the threes will cancel out, and so will the fives. All those numbers go away, just leaving x, which is what we want. And now we have 60 times 3 fifths. The way I would do this on my calculator would be 60 times 3 divided by 5. And we get 36. So x, well, I'm running into the other problem, aren't I? X equals 36. Okay, I don't know if I've left myself enough room for this last problem, so maybe we'll do it down here. This is um, not an equation, it's an inequality, so it's got a greater than or equal to sign uh, here in the middle of it, and it's got some parentheses over here, it's got x's on both sides of the equations, so lots of complicated stuff. Let me show you how to handle all of this, and then once we get an answer here, we've got to make it match up with one of these line graphs. The first thing to do when you see something like this is take care of the parentheses. 
If you've got a number snugged right up against a set of parentheses, what that means is that everything inside is multiplied by the number that's outside. So I would take this 3 and multiply it by the first thing and then multiply it by the second thing. And that would allow me to get rid of those parentheses. So 3 times x would be, I'm just going to write it over here, 3x. And 3 times a negative 3 would be negative 9. So this whole thing becomes 3x minus 9. Now let me write in the rest of the equation here. We've got our greater than or equal to sign, and over here we've got 5x minus 2. Now this is a spot where sometimes people get a little bit stumped. We've got x's on both sides of the equation, so what do you do? You're supposed to get the x on one side of the equation and then get all the numbers on the other side. Well, actually you have a choice here. You could get rid of the 5x over here by sub just subtracting 5x from both sides, or you could get rid of the 3x over here by subtracting 3x from both sides. Personally, I would suggest subtracting 3x because then you don't end up with a negative number to have to deal with. Whenever possible, try to avoid those negative numbers. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. When I subtract 3x from 3x here, it becomes 0, so which we won't even write. It's like they cancel. When I subtract 3x from 5x, that becomes 2x. Now we haven't done anything with this minus 2, so it just comes on down. And then our inequality sign. And then this, haven't done anything with this minus 9, so that comes on down. And this is looking a lot better. The next thing I want to do is get rid of this minus 2 that's hanging out over here. So I add 2 to both sides of the equation. That adds up to 0. Negative 9 plus 2 would be negative 7. We'll rewrite it again. So now I've got 2x is greater than or equal to negative 7. Last step to get x alone is simply divide both sides by 2. And I get x is greater than or equal to negative 7 halves. Negative 7 divided by 2 is negative 3.5. So x is greater than or equal to negative 3.5. Now I've got some answer choices to look at here. And actually they're giving the answer and they're drawing a picture of it. We're saying x is greater than negative 3.5 and there's actually only one of these. Here you see it's, there's a greater than and a less than but not greater than or equal to. Here, this one looks right. x is greater than or equal to negative 3.5. This one says x is less than or equal to negative 3.5. So it looks like b is right and then they graph that and the graph looks right too. So I think that's our answer. That's a very complicated uh, algebraic inequality.